what's up scrappers today i'm gonna be scrapping out some flat screen tvs and monitors for gold copper aluminum and tin shred the first question obviously is it worth it well one thing about these tvs now it's not like it was back in the day these are disposable tvs people buy them break them and they throw them out um, it's something you're going to find all the time, street scrapping, driving up and down alleys on Facebook market, broken TVs or old TVs that aren't smart TVs. People are just throwing them out and buying new ones every day. So this is something that you can pile up fairly quickly and fairly easily. Um, you don't have to have a big trailer to get it. You can put it in the back seat of the car. You can put it in the back of the truck. You can put it in the back of your SUV anything that you're driving you can pretty much put most of these tvs in as long as it's not one of those extra huge tvs so the second question is how much gold and it's very very little but there is some gold and we'll get it out of there and try to see how much we end up with i'll go ahead and process it through acid peroxide to remove it from the pcb boards and i'll show all those steps during this process but for now i gotta bust them down and get the parts out all right guys, I have completely got the TVs done and here is all of our gold containing components from them. We have first and foremost, of course, what everyone's after is the gold PCB boards. These are basically same thing as like Ram fingers, gold finger cards and, and the such. Um, obviously there's a gold plating where all these connections are some are better than others. This one here is actually pretty thick. It was from an older computer monitor. Some have big gold plated squares or circles on them. So that's pretty much the main thing we're after here in the TVs. Um, each one of these pin arrays is gonna have gold plated pins that we'll remove and they'll be processed a little bit differently, but that's pretty much it. We're looking for the gold platings on the boards, IC chips and other gold things that we can find off of those boards. Next, we have the ribbon cables. I already cut the ends off. Again, not very much gold. A very, very thin layer of gold plated on copper, which we'll be removing the same way as these gold fingers. Normally, I don't process these. I save them up, process some before, and the gold foils that come off are really nice and pretty, but they're basically nothing to, as far as processing. I won't do these again until this can is completely full. But for the sake of the video, I will process these along with these boards. Next, we move on to the control boards, T-boards, whatever they're called, basically the motherboards of the TV. So this one has a few things. Both of those plugs will have gold-plated pins. We have a crystal oscillator, an IC chip, and that's pretty much it. This one, pretty much along the same lines, we have a BGA chip, a couple of them, crystal oscillator, some gold pins in that connection and so on pretty much the same with all of them this was from one of the newer tvs where it can connect to internet we have gold plating on the board gold plating connectors a bga chip with a gold band oscillator and some gold plated pins so we'll be depopulating that and processing this board along with those this board had a little bit more than I expected. It was a little bit nicer. We've got more gold pins in there, gold pins in the phone jack. And under this heat sink, we have a BGA chip and a couple IC chips. This piece that I already removed and opened up has a gold band oscillator, some gold flashing, and another BGA chip. This one is copper plated there that's not gold it's copper it might show up different on the video but it is copper we've got gold plated pins in both of those connections 
a couple BGA chips, and one of these guys that I like, the gold-plated fuses, ceramic fuses. This board was a little better than the others. Same thing, gold pins, gold pins, crystal oscillator, just a few other things on there that we like. But under this heat sink, we had a gold corner BGA. If you don't know what those are, you need to find out. Those have one of the highest concentrations of gold per kilo of anything you'll find in electronics. And last, these would normally just be thrown in with the power boards. Basically nothing here, just copper, a couple transformers and some plugs. There's no gold plated pins or anything like that, but both of these have a gold plated fuse, which I don't find very often. So I really like them and I save them up. So next step is depopulate everything, get these boards into the acid peroxide and stack up the rest of our gold containing components. So here's all of our boards depopulated. Only they have pieces of solder left on them. So what we want to do is make sure that they'll fit in our beaker and we can cover them with the hydrochloric tin solution. And of course these are real flimsy. I mean, you can just break them, but when you break them, it leaves a lot of this kind of fiber hanging off. And I just don't like all that in the solution. I find it to come out a little bit cleaner when you cut them. So I just got a set of 10 snips, cuts right through them nice and clean. So there we go, we got all the boards in the beaker. We're gonna add some tin solution, which is just hydrochloric acid and water. Now what we're gonna do is just let this tin solution dissolve any remaining solder that's on those boards. It's pretty cold today, so we're not gonna get any help from the sun like I usually like to do this. We're just going to put it on some low heat and let it cook away, make ourselves busy with something else and let that solder dissolve. Now I'll come back when it's all done. I've got the boards removed from the tin solution and rinsed off. The majority of the solder is gone. I've got my AP acid peroxide solution. This I've used several times for small amounts of boards and stuff like this that I process. Um, AP's simple and easy to make if you don't know how it's basically a two to one ratio of hydrochloric acid and peroxide um, you don't need to measure it out precisely as far as i can tell um, as long as we're not boiling it we're not even adding a bubbler to this so there's zero chance of us dissolving any of our gold with this mixture like i said i've used this several times it's worked fine i just get the gold foils, filter everything out, stick a piece of iron in there, cement out the copper and use it again. So it's really cheap, easy to make, but I don't see any reason to dump this yet when I can still use it. So now I'm gonna get all the boards added into the AP along with our ribbon cable ends. That's about it. We won't see anything happen immediately. So we'll just sit this up and let it work. We'll check on it tomorrow and give it a shake every so often, get that stuff agitated to take those gold foils off. But in the meantime, we will start depopulating and processing these other boards that came out of the TVs. Uh... 
Next, we're gonna dissolve the solder and legs from the BGA and IC chips, just using tin solution. This is not an instructional video. This is how I process gold recovered from electronics. Do not attempt these processes unless you have a working knowledge of the acids and the reactions being done. Proper personal protective equipment must be used. We finished rinsing all the PCBs off with water. That way we can catch the remaining gold foils that were stuck to them. We'll add that in to this filter with the other gold foils. There's some really, really fine gold flakes that made it through the paper filter. So we're running them through a cotton filter, which should catch every last one of them. Now that our base metals have been dissolved from our chips and gold pins, we'll cotton filter the solution, catching any gold foils in the filter and getting our solution down here to test for silver. Now we'll put everything together before making aqua regia. We've got our gold bonding wires and gold pins. We've got the gold foils from our PCBs the ultra fine gold foils that we had to catch in the cotton filter and the gold foils that made it through our nitric acid wash so we'll combine all these together in this beaker and then make aqua regia all of our gold flakes have disappeared meaning they've been dissolved into solution by the aqua regia so we will paper filter this, try to filter out some of the junk that's in there and go from there. Now we're done filtering. We had to run it through about two or three different filters to get it clear. I don't like the way that it's still green as opposed to yellow, but then again, there's not much gold in this solution. So we're gonna be stuck with a little bit of green what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna turn the heat up a little bit and I have 300 milliliters. I'm gonna try to boil this down to maybe 150 or 100 milliliters. And one thing this is gonna do is condense our solution and it's also gonna expel any excess nitric that we have in solution. So we'll go ahead and let this boil for a little while, try to get it down to around 100, 150 milliliters before we go to our next step. So we boiled our solution pretty much all the way down and our Stannis test confirms there is some gold in there. It doesn't look like very much, but we didn't really expect that much anyways, did we? So we're just gonna let this cool off and from there we'll go to precipitate our gold. Now we've got 100 milliliters of hot distilled water with one spoon of sodium metabisulfite dissolved in there. We're gonna add that to our solution. We'll add just a little bit more powder, sodium metabisulfite to that to make sure we dropped all of our gold from solution. So here it is. I moved our solution over to a smaller beaker 
make it a little easier to collect our gold sediment once it's settled out. We've already got a little bit there at the bottom and quite a bit of really fine gold still suspended in our solution. So we'll leave this to sit overnight. We'll check it tomorrow and see how much gold we got in the bottom. All right, so here we go. Moment of truth. We got a little bit of gold in there, not much. About what I would expect from six flat screens. Well, technically four flat screen TVs and two computer monitors. I'm going to try to get the right angle on this. I don't know if y'all can see, but there is a tiny, tiny bit of gold powder suspended on top, even though I let this sit overnight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour this off through a tightly packed cotton filter, and that will catch any leftover gold powder that, that comes off when I pour this out. So we're just going to very, very carefully slowly and carefully try to pour this out so here's our gold powder all dried let's see if we can get any weight on it that jar is 216 grams so we got a half a gram of gold powder already in here we're going to zero this out Let's get that powder down here in my gold containment jar. Point 0.1 gram. One tenth of a gram of gold from those four TVs and two computer monitors. There is a little bit of gold powder residue here where I poured off the solution. We'll let that dry and add it into our jar of filters with gold. And they just get processed with the next batch of stuff that we run through Aqua Regia. Another thing I do is there will be a very small amount of residual gold powder that stuck to the sides of this beaker and the way i deal with that is the next time i make aqua regia i make it in this beaker i heat it up in this beaker before adding it to my other materials and that way i go ahead and get that gold in solution before dealing with anything else so there it is that's our 0.1 grams of gold from six flat screens it's hard to average it out. They were different sizes, different kinds, different models. Two of them were computer monitors, but if we were gonna just average that out, that would be 0 0.016 grams per TV, something like that. Not a lot, but we didn't expect a lot. But the video is how much gold, copper, aluminum, you can get from scrap flat screen TVs, and there it is. 0.1 grams is what I got. Hopefully, I'll get more. We got a little bit of copper from the power control boards and stuff. A little bit of wires. Of course, you would have the power cords and plugs and stuff like that. Some aluminum heat sinks from the power boards. And some pieces of cast aluminum from the bases of two of the TVs. So, there it is. That's what we got. Not a total loss, not a really big score on the gold, but there is some gold there, so we'll take what we can get. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, please take a second to hit that subscribe button, like, and share the channel. Scrap Daddy 365 y'all. Let's see what else we can get into.